Hello fellow artisans. In this short video I'd like to give a practical introduction to our Laravel media library package. Shortly said, our media library can help you associate files with eloquent models. Imagine you're building a kind of CMS app and your user uploads some files. How are you going to store those files and how are you going to associate them with your article model or your blog post model or whatever. This is where Laravel Media Library can help you a lot. Now, first off the bat, I want to tell you that we have excellent documentation about this package. It's a real powerhouse, it can do a lot. So we've um, made sure that every feature has its own page here. But I don't want to go over everything here in detail. I just want to show it to you. So let's head over to PHP Storm where I have prepared some things. So here we are in a default Laravel application. And if you look at the Composer JSON file, I've installed the media library. At the time of this recording, Laravel 5.5 isn't released yet, so we're using some uh, development versions here. You'll also notice that in this application, I've already prepared an article model and a migration. Um, to get started with the media library, you have to prepare the model a little bit further. I've um, put here a last uh, function on it, that's just for uh, the purposes of this demonstration. You don't need to do that in your own app. But to get started with the media library, you have to implement the has media interface. And let me import that. And you have to add a trait on it, has media trait. And then you're ready to uh, associate some files with this model. Let's take a look at some configuration first. Um, let's head over to medialibrary.php in the config folder. And you see that the first key in that file points to uh, the default file system. And we use media here. Now, this references the name of a disk that you've configured in the file systems uh, configuration. So, by default, if you install uh, our media library package, it will use the public disk because the public disk is already set by the Laravel skeleton. But personally, I'd like to keep my media a bit separate. So I've created a media disk on and that uses a local uh, directory and which one? The media subdirectory in the public path. Okay, let's head over to the routes file where I've prepared some uh, little examples. In this first example, we are going to do something very simple. We're just going to add a file to the media library. Um, and the code involved is uh, not that difficult. We're just going to create a new article and we are going to add some media to it. And which media? It's uh, something from my storage path here. And let me show it to you. It's this beautiful picture of last year's Laracon EU. Lots of fellow artisans there. Then we have the preserve original call here. Uh, why did I do this? By default, the media library will um, copy, you know, will move uh, files to its own directory structure. But I want to let the media library copy uh, something because I'd like to keep this file around for some future demos and then we are going to do the actual work now I've wrapped uh, all of this in uh, in a route here and I've got a little helper function here uh, which can uh, visit that route so let's do that now if I go to my public directory here then you see I don't have a media subdirectory here um, and let's do the magic. We're just going to visit that route. We are getting a 200 OK. And if I refresh here, sure enough, we have our media stored here. Now, let's take a look at how we can do some interesting things with this. Let me open up a Tinker session. And I can get uh, to the last created article here with that last function you saw earlier and how can i get media from uh, 
eloquent mobile it's just calling get media and then you can see that we have the media here now i can um this is this get media thing that's uh, just a, a collection here so i can ask uh, for the first one here and on that's uh, a media uh, model here and to a media model i can ask give me your pod where are you stored so that's where it's stored on the on the file system but you can also ask it give me your url and that url you can use that in the href uh, attribute of an uh, of an image tag let's take a look at the, the database to see how this is all stored so yeah we have here that article that i created and you can see here that we have a media uh, table here which has all the relevant uh, information about our uh, media file Okay, that's a, just a very simple first example. Let's take a look at a second example here. Um, here we have some more code, but it's, it's not that uh, more difficult actually. We're just going to create a new article and then we're going to associate two files to it. And here I'd like to um, demonstrate that the media library has this um, concept of collections. You can put uh, media in different uh, sort of groups of files so you can uh, process them a little bit separately let's uh, visit that route uh, so visit two so did it succeed yes we have 200 okay here and let's uh, open up a new tinker session here and i'm going to um, take a look at the last created article here uh, sure enough it's created give me uh, the media and give me not all media but give me the the images here you can see here we have that Laracon EU image here and uh, if I go to the downloads because I've added that EU image to collection images I've added that um, multi-million dollar contract PDF to something called downloads and you can see here that it's in a group uh, downloads cool now of course you can uh, store multiple things here if i just uh, copy this here so i have two um, um, things in that media collection here and let me revisit that route here um, let's tinker um, article lost get media images then you can see here that we have a collection with two images in, in here so you can add as much as many uh, files in a collection as you want okay if you've kept an eye here on um, my directory structure here then you can see here that we have um, uh, lots of files in our media library now and the thing that I'd like to demonstrate is that if you um, delete the original article, it will also automatically delete the associated media. So let's do that now. So if I open up a Tinker session and I'm um, fetching the last article here, so the last one, and I call delete on it, delete, so that it's gone. And you can see here that all the files on the last article uh, have been removed and if I just remove everything here um, so article um, all and then for each one I'm going to call delete then media should be gone so there's nothing left here so the media library will clean a little bit up after itself if you delete the models with media, the media will be deleted and the associated files will be deleted as well. Okay, let's scroll down for a third example and here things will get a little bit more interesting. Now we've seen that the media library can store files, but there's another big thing that the media library can do for you. It can generate derived files. 
Um, imagine that you're building a site with a list page and a detail page. And on that list page, you have yeah, separate news items or blog items or whatever. And you want to show the first image of each. You don't want to use the original image for that because the original image could be quite large. You want to have uh, a thumbnail of that uh, that's very small so that it isn't slow when you uh, show like 10 or 20 of them. In the media library, you can um, generate such thumbnails and other derived files for you. And that is what we are going to see now. Um, I'm going to head back over to the model itself. Um, so instead of implementing has media, which is enough for just storing media, there's another one that I actually use all the time, has media conversions. And let me import that. If you uh, use the has media conversions, then you have to um, implement a function, register media conversion. And this is where you can say, which conversions that you'd like to do whenever an image is associated with uh, this model. So let's do uh, something um, easy first. So um, we are going to add a media conversion here. I'm going to name it thumb of thumbnail. And here you can tack on any operation that, that you want. These operations are provided by our uh, image uh, package and uh, we have a uh, like you see a lot of them and the most uh, used are probably the height and the width so I want to have something that fits into a height of uh, 100 and the width of 100 and just for fun let's make it grayscale as well okay um, let's head back over to the routes file here and close of Tinker and let's uh, visit that uh, route, so visit tree. And if I take a look at the media folder here, then we have, um, yeah, we have that original image stored here, but why isn't the, um, the thumbnail here? Well, the media library uses queues to do that. And I forgot to turn on the queues. Now this project uses Laravel Horizon. So let's start that now. So we will execute everything that the media library has put on the, on the queue. Let's hope the conversion is there. And sure enough, it has processed the conversion. And here we have our thumbnail, which should be sm smaller and uh, grayscale so nice that worked of course you can um, use as much conversions as uh, as you'd like let's uh, go back to our article model here and just use another media conversion here add media conversion and which one um don't have any have inspiration here so let's just name it test which operation are we going to uh, give it here? Let's um, turn it a little bit around. Um, let's uh, blur it uh, a little bit and that's it. And let's uh, name this, uh, let's name it fun. Okay, cool. Horizon is still running. So in another tab, I'm just going to um, hit my uh, demo route again. So visit number three here and yeah horizon uh, is doing some things we have a new um, media thing here and sure enough we got our turnaround and our blurred image here um, let's see how we can uh, get URLs to those conversions here because I didn't uh, demo that yet so let's open up uh, Tinker here Let's um, go to our last article model and get uh, all the media of images here. And then we have this uh, collection of, uh, of images. And um, now that I'm here, I'm going to show you a little, little shortcut here because it's very common that you want to have the first media. We have a, 
a shortcut for that, get first media. So get first media and then you have to specify the, the collection. So this is the first media in images here. And on such a media object, I can um, call get URL. And then I have the URL to the original one, or I can use the name of a profile here. So if I uh, use a funny here, I get the URL to uh, the funny conversion here. Uh, there is also a shortcut for that because probably you're going to, um, in a list view, use that first media URL lot. We have also first media URL funny. Oh yeah, uh, mistaken if you're going to use get first media URL, the first parameter is the collection name and the second one is the, is the conversion name. So that's uh, how that works. And if I leave off the, um, the conversion name, I'm just going to get the URL of the first image. Cool. Now the thing that the media library will do automatically for you is optimize converted images. And it optimizes them by removing the, the metadata from it and applying a little bit of compression to it because probably you want those conversions to be as uh, small as possible. Um, let's demonstrate that by adding another media conversion. Um, let's, yeah, just let's remove this entirely and add a media conversion here which we'll call optimized and we'll do nothing with this because by default the media library will optimize images and let uh, let's add another one here called non-optimized and if you don't want to have an optimized image then you can uh, call here non-optimized so let's put that on the, on the queue here. So I'm going to visit my third route again here. And then we have nine here and we have two conversions, conversions a non-optimized, which is uh, 690 kilobytes, and an optimized one, which is a little bit uh, smaller. So by default, the media library will optimize your images. Let's talk about another big feature of the media library. Um, so far in all demos, we have used our uh, public directory here to store files, but the media library can actually use uh, multiple file system to store things. So maybe you want to uh, put some big files on a thing like, uh, like S3, or maybe you just want to move your entire media library to uh, S3, um, the media library can help you with that. Let's uh, view a little, little demonstration of that. Um, now, the first thing that I'm going to show you is that in my file systems um, disk here, uh, file systems configuration here, I have another disk here configured, the S3 thing. Um, I'm not going to uh, go in depth about uh, how this is configured. You'll find that in the Laravel documentation. Um, okay, let's go back to our routes here. And it's very simple if you want to um, put things to S3. Um, the to media collection function has uh, a second parameter, disk name, where you can just specify the disk name. So if I want to store this on S3, I can do so. Okay, let's uh, visit that uh, route again. So visit three. And that's succeeded. And I think Horizon has, uh, here it is um, processing those jobs. And if I go to my directory here, yeah, we don't have the, the tenth one here because we sent it to S3. And if I uh, go into Transmit, Transmit which, uh, which is a program uh, where I can view the contents of my S3 bucket here. And if I refresh here, sure enough, we've uh, uploaded that uh, picture here and we have those uh, conversions here, nice. And you can also, 
um, keep on using the methods that I demonstrated to get to the uh, URL of an image. So let's open up a Tinker session. If I um, go to the last article and I'm going to get the first uh, media URL of the media in the images collection and I want to have the optimized version then media library now gives me an uh, URL to S3 instead of uh, a local URL. Now for this uh, to work, you should specify the public URL of your bucket in the media library configuration. If I open it up here, then you can see here that I've put uh, the domain uh, name here, but media library has taken care of all the rest here. So that's very nice you don't have when building up your views you don't have to think about where your media is stored there's one more thing that i'd like to show you before we close off um let me head back to our routes file here during this uh, whole video we've just used some files that we have already stored on our disk to add to the main library. But in a typical app, um, you're going to want to process some uploads. And instead of using add media, you can uh, just do add media from request and just give it the key of your upload and it will just grab your upload and the other methods will just work. Maybe one more thing. Um, when you upload stuff to S3 and you want to set some custom headers, you can add some uh, some extra headers here. Um, what do we have here? We can set the file name so you can change the, the name of the file before it is being added to the to the media library. Yeah, there are lots of options we have uh, with attributes here. So you can add some custom attributes to a media model and you can use uh, those custom properties to do anything uh, that you'd like yeah there's just a lot of things possible now to learn more about the package i just suggest that you head over to our uh, documentation uh, site here it contains really everything that you've learned uh, during uh, this video and it goes into some uh, other features as well like those custom properties that uh, i've mentioned you have lots of examples here uh, you can have uh, specific manipulations for specific um, media items. There are examples how to work with, uh, with collections a little bit. So yeah, I think you'll find a lot of uh, useful information here. So with that, I've said everything that I wanted to say about uh, the media library. I hope that you've enjoyed this little introduction and that the media library can help you in your next project.